so hello everyone uh, firstly thank you so much for uh, taking the time out from your busy schedule and joining in today we have very special guest today we have invited him we took some time to invite him he was slightly occupied with other uh, commitments so we've got mr amit jeswani with us uh, he is the founder of stellian assets uh, he brings about more than 15 years of experience almost one and a half decades because uh, some of you might be uh, confused that when i say one and a half decade it doesn't look like that old so how you know on what basis am i saying this but he started investing when he was uh, at the age of 14 and uh, equity investing has come from his family background i mean it's there in his blood so there are you know if you if you look at we got a positive o positive b positive but in his case it is going to be e, eq positive <laughs> it is equity investing positive because uh, his father has been investing in equities and and he has grown with that culture of equity investing and he has learned the power of compounding at an early stage of his his, his career and therefore you know he is kind of grown in that family and i think it would, i would say that it was well planned because he studied from abroad he is graduated in business with finance from kingston university london he is also completed double chartered so chartered financial analyst from usa uh, he's got double degree of uh, analyst uh, analysis in terms of <coughs> equity research so completely research background uh, both uh, personally as well as professionally so we thought who would be the better person to talk about what's happening in current markets because i am sure uh, at his career of 15 years of investments he would have seen now at least two major cycles uh, one would be the lehman brother crisis the other one is the recent past which is covid uh, i'm talking about the major one of course there were many other like brexit etc etc so we thought uh, we'll invite him and uh, understand more Uh, in terms of what is uh, their house views on the equity so amit firstly thank you so much for accepting our request and taking the time out from your busy schedule and joining in today we are happy to have you on board thank you thank you vikash it's a pleasure to be on uh, this uh, show with you uh, i've been tracking pms af experts for a long time and thank you so much for inviting me today yeah thank you it's absolutely our pleasure uh and the idea is you know with why we do all that is very very clear that when i uh you know built up this platform uh, i spent about 20 years in the industry and what i learned uh you know during my stint with various organization is that there is huge gap um, when it comes to alternate investings and portfolio management cult in india you know so what i felt is that when there is a gap why not we'll kind of solve uh, the bigger problem of educating and empowering every investor with uh, complete information and insights about various aifs and pmss and of course it is their discretion if they want to invest or not but our attempt is not that way attempt is to educate and empower and then provide our advice if they wish to so we have done about 130 shows so far and uh, i'm thankful to all our investors that who are encouraging us and supporting us with more than 5000 subscriptions on the youtube and more down more than 10000 subscriptions to our our um, website uh, so we'll start the session i don't want to waste uh, uh, much time here and coming to my first question uh, amit um, is that uh, you know since you've seen multiple cycles uh, what is your uh, what is your view you think that the markets are bottoming out or you see more pain uh, in due course so vikash you typically the markets so every cycle for last uh, we've got enough data in the indian stock market for the last 30 years from harshad mehta crisis to 2008 crisis harshad mehta crisis the bottom was formed in 9 months 2008 crisis the bottom was formed in 9 months 2016 crisis i'm speaking about time period uh, 2015 16 that was the china devaluation uh, the bottom was formed in 12 months typically even 2018 where you had 6% of indian uh, banks going bankrupt or nbfcs going bankrupt the bottom was formed in 9 months uh, the fall started in january and bottom was formed in october on the nifty uh, typically between 9 months to 15 months uh, because the market goes up like steps it goes up slowly slowly like like steps but when it comes down it comes down as a elevator right it comes down pretty fast so my understanding is that the market topped in october anywhere between june to december the bottom should have got made 
very high likelihood that people who invest in tranches over the next six months, who've already invested now, and uh, the next five, six months, even if something unknown happens. So the Fed will not cause, the markets are already discounting a 75 bips or 100 bips. Now, it doesn't matter, right? Everyone knows that the Fed will move towards 3%. It's well discounted uh, in the market. So anyone who's telling you about uh, like 75 bips high, 100 bips, that all that is only good for media news. The market has already discounted that there will be a rate hike. Inflation is at 9.1%. But think about it. What is happening? If inflation is at 9.1% today, for inflation to be higher next year, crude needs to be above $120, right? You need to have, because inflation is incremented right from the base is already very high and crude is now already corrected to 90 dollars gas prices are corrected 35 percent uh, metals are corrected on average 30 to 40 percent not just in india around the globe uh, so you're seeing supply chain challenges are the thing of the past if you look at uh, the whole problem started with supply chain problems right uh, no one is now speaking about massive supply chain problems anymore uh, so, uh, when you look at the entire concept, I would say that this, this, this bear market started with inflation fears. Uh, this bear market will have to end with inflation uh, fears going away. And uh, I am confident that one year from today, no one will speak about inflation uh, as much as we are speaking today. So, basically, the markets have a very short memory. In 2016-17, if you remember, everyone was speaking about uh, demonetization, how this will be a game changer. But by end of 2018, people were not, no one wanted to. In one year, people forget what's the hot topic. Like just two years back, uh, before today, we were in lockdown, right? But who speaks about COVID anymore? <laughs> so uh, the markets have a short memory. People keep looking ahead. And uh, I, I, I don't expect inflation. It will be become a thing of a past. Uh, but of course, with this crisis, uh, Europe will take time to come back and those things will be ha will, will happen. But global funds, the FI selling will come back, uh, will revert to FI buying. So now is the time uh, for FIs have sold closer to three and a half, four lakh crores in last uh, eight, nine months. Uh, in my humble opinion, they will be bigger buyers than what the four lakh crores selling they have done in the next two years. The question is that are you in the right stocks? Are you invested to your potential to take advantage of that uh, FI buying? Because th that's that's going to happen for sure. So uh, if you are in good companies, they come and they'll buy from you at 30, 40% higher prices, at least if not more. So as you rightly mentioned that domestically, we don't see any issue. Uh, I see that. You know, all the numbers are pre-COVID levels, whether you talk about, you know, buying and selling stuff at mall level or you talk about the other GST numbers, which are really uh, encouraging. March was the month when we recorded the highest collection. But when do you see this global issues settling down? Uh, not only inflation, but there are other issues also. If you can throw some more lights on that. Vikasji, my focus has been to buy companies which, regardless of high inflation, low inflation, uh, Mayavati, Modi, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, uh, can keep growing at 20-25%, right? Because these things in India or anywhere, there is almost always a problem. Sometimes you have your Greece going bankrupt in 2011-12, Greece, Portugal, Italy, Spain. Then you had taper tantrums in 2013. There is always a problem in the market. You need to focus on which are the companies which will increase the profits 7, 8x, 10x in next, that is 18 to 25% growth I'm speaking about in the next 10 years in, in, in the sectors, whichever, like we typically invest in consumer pharma, which are the defensives and technology and fin financials. So I'm very sure on few things. India will move from $3 trillion GDP today to $6 trillion in the next 10 years. It can happen in eight years, nine years, 10 years, but that that broadly will happen. Now we need to select which are the stocks that will do well. You, and you need 20, 25 names. You don't want only just five companies. That'll be too concentrated. Uh, you don't need hundred names, right? Uh, you need a good portfolio of 20, 25 stocks that will do well. Uh, and, and they will typically, what happens is Vikashi, 
what you idly want see no industry in india grows at 18 to 25 percent let's be very clear no industry in india grows at 18 to 25 percent ideally what you want is the company should be in a, in a 10 12 growing uh, like every industry grows at 10 12 percent from a paper industry to a mobile phone industry just think about it to a uh, industry which is spelling selling specs virtually everything in india grows at 10 12 percent what you need is a company who's a market leader okay has three four five percent of the entire market share okay it is growing faster than the industry and you also need weak competition so 90 95 percent player of the market need to be very weak competition and they can every year gain market share so i'll give you an example yesterday i was speaking to a ceo of a, a medical pharmacy company okay uh, because she in India, there are 9 lakh, 9 lakh pharmacy retail counters. Biggest is Apollo at, uh, at uh, 5,000 retail stores. Second biggest is Med Plus at uh, 23, 2400 stores. Uh, the third biggest is Wellness Forever at 300 stores. The total, all these combined, is less than 1% of organized pharmacy in india so the 99 percent of uh, the counter is so basically uh, i agree there is competition from one mg uh, uh, so i'm um, we've not bought anything here so when you see that mm -hmm. this is the kind of pattern that you want to look at that who are the guys how big can these guys get and pharmacy is not just pharmacy anymore so 40 percent of pharmacy revenues the in india today in most stores are actually FMCG revenues. They sell diapers, they sell uh, Kit Kats, they sell Cadbury. So you sell everything. It's like a 24-7 grocery store plus uh, uh, plus uh, medicine store uh, kind of uh, venture. And they are solving for very many things, I would say. Uh, that, and the game is just getting started. And globally, if you look at it, okay. Typically, organized stores are 30 to 40 percent, be it China. If anyone goes, goes to the UK, there is boots everywhere, right? That is 35 percent of uh, pharmacy. And how they are doing it, there is in a pharmacy. I'll just give you an example. This is just an example. In a pharmacy, there is a manufacturer. Let's say a bot is the manufacturer. Then there is super stockist who is on the state level. Then there is district level distributor. Then there is... Uh, area level and then there is store level okay so that's how but the big boys they directly buy from the manufacturers and that advantage they pass it on to their customers like a normal uh, retailer will give you 10 percent discount uh, these guys can give you 20 percent discount and or 22 percent discount and yet have the same uh, profitability level because uh, it, low cost in retail low cost is everything be it grocery retail, pharmacy retail, or uh, any other kind of uh, retail uh, that that and uh, the kind of opportunity India offers across. I'm just speaking about since we're just speaking about pharmacy and there is no inventory risk, very high inventory on in third. Even if your margins are twenty percent gross margins, okay. If you can turn your inventory ten times a year, you end up making. So it is not about margins. Dmart's margin is fifteen percent. And demand turns inventory 10 times. So if you can turn your inventory multiple times with low, uh, decent enough margin, uh, you can make very large returns. And India is offering that opportunity across uh, from financials. Today, private sector financials. Today, HDFC Bank loan book size is 12 lakh crores. Bajaj Finance is 2 lakh crores. ICICI Bank is 8 lakh crores. Uh, Axis Bank is 4 or 5 lakh crores. Indus Indus is 2 lakh crores. So all these banks combined is broadly 26, 27 lakh crores. Right? Uh, your India's banking sector is 110 lakh crores as of today. All these private sector banks combined on AUM is 20. These ones, the good ones I spoke about. I'm not taking in consideration RBL, etc. Uh, uh, but these banks combined are 25, 27%. So if you get good banks in this you you are broadly certain that if my cost of capital is the lowest i can lend to the triple a guys not have credit cost you not very difficult for you to get a 20 25 percent kind of compounding uh, for a very long period of time and
so across the industry spectrum you need those 25 companies who are a very small percentage of the entire opportunity they have the ability capability to grow faster than the industry rate for a very very long period of time and once you identify you'll probably identify 50 60 such companies then you need to see that uh, is this the right valuation start with it starts with being a good business then the uh, ability of that management to scale up right because in india uh, most management and promoters once they start making 50 100 crores a year that is enough for them right they have their bmws their audis their massive penthouses and that that greed is very important because we stock market investors will not make money till the time he doesn't go from 100 crores to 1000 crores right we want incremental profit growth so and we need predictable uh, growth there's the reason why jsw steel who did 20000 crores of profit last year has a market cap of 1.2 lakh crore and asian paint who, who does a 3000 crore uh, who did a 3000 crore profit last year has a market cap of two and a half three lakh crores the reason is predictability so what you need is so large market cap creation will not happen if you don't have predictable uh, sustainable scalable uh, growth uh, of your cash flows so those are the kind of bets that you look at yeah. Yes, yes. And then you think that now coming to the macro. So I told you we invest in consumer, pharma, technology, financials. Some technology companies in technology services. If something goes wrong in Indian macros, the dollar goes higher, right? If the dollar goes higher, my tech basket makes money. My pharma basket makes money because these are exporters. If, if inflation goes higher, my Consumer companies are hedged because they have a retailer and a consumer company is largely hedged, right? Uh, if it, but of course, it impacts the technology consumer tech stocks because they are growth stocks. So if bond deals also go higher and valuation of these stocks come lower. So you have to be across. But broadly, your thing should be that I need to make a cricket team. But this cricket team doesn't have 11 players. It has 20 players, 25 players of companies which can uh, scale up. And customers need to love a product. A, a business cannot go up 7, 8, 10x if the customers don't love the product. That is uh, probably one of the most important parts. And there needs to be a large opportunity. And then you see that who will get that uh, pie of uh, that value chain. Sure. So before we talk to you more about your investment philosophy and you know, how do you select these stocks in bottom-up approach or you look at industry-wise, take a bird view. But one question is, so, you know, you studied from abroad. So what made you to come back and start this BMS company? And why not you, you know, one point of time would have ever thought that to stay back there only and probably start some hedge fund, which will operate from Singapore, etc., etc. et cetera. Uh, so uh, a hedge fund. So that time, I'll tell you, my salary, the, the I got a 35,000 pound job in the UK. Okay. And... Uh, my cousins that time were making massive amounts of money in real estate. Okay, that is the time where uh, real estate used to boom. And I kept telling myself that 30,000 pounds, then you have to pay taxes. Uh, <laughs> and then you have very hefty rent. I will never be able to be a rich man. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so I thought that if I want to be rich, I'll have to come back to India. Uh, so so that, that's the reason why I came back to India. Uh, of course, uh, uh, I looked at real estate for three, four months, six months, but I, I, it's like looking uh, at the grass growing, right? You can't do much. Once you're invested, you're invested. What more can you do in real estate? So, uh, so I thought that this is not my cup of tea. Uh, so my father also invests decent size capital in the real estate side. In Raipur, he used to do it. And Raipur became a capital in uh, 2001, two. And there was a massive bull market, basically. Uh, what you're witnessing in Hyderabad today. Uh, for the ones who in Hyderabad would know what kind of real estate. Because once a, a, a state becomes, so Chhattisgarh became different from Madhya Pradesh and there was a massive uh, real estate boom. Uh, so that is how, then, but after three, four months, I understood that's not my cup of tea. I went back to finding a job for myself. And I was lucky enough to get uh, a few jobs uh, here and there on the trading side only. So I was, I didn't start because she has being on the investing side. So I actually started being a trader. Okay, uh, I was a trader throughout and uh, I have done my CMT also, which is Chartered Market Technician. 
so I was uh, with uh, with the global uh, trading house. I would say uh, I used to trade for them uh, fairly decent sizes. So that those trades were anywhere between a few hours. understanding of screen reading yeah even in london i used to do a lot of trading the market so it was for me i didn't think myself as an investor i thought myself as a trader so uh, I, I basically my whole goal was to trade the markets but one thing you learn as a trader that is risk management and and how to manage risk how to allocate capital because it's a high intensity uh, kind of thing and then uh, I got a job with one of uh, the largest uh, asset management uh, firm in the world, probably the top 10 asset management. They manage, I last I saw was closer to $300 billion. But when I was there, they used to manage $100 billion. So, uh, uh, so the, I got a job there. So I was looking at the US market again, uh, China market, Taiwan, basically anything which can be traded, I traded. <laughs> so uh, uh, we good, got a good hang of markets, but I was doing way, very well uh, in that firm. And I was compounding capital at some outstanding percentages. Um, and that's how I, start, uh, I started Stalin. I thought if I can do it, why not uh, just try? Uh, not that I would recommend anyone to do it again, because that time, Vikashi, I was 24 or 25 years old, right? And one thing that I forgot is that nobody in his right mind would trust a 24, 25 year old guy. <laughs> so getting capital was virtually next to impossible. And in that two, three year period, I would say I would have spoken to at least, at least worst case, 10,000 people, right? I would uh, <laughs> and try to pitch my style, my strategy. And then we actually started off as a research desk. And at one point of time, we scaled up the research desk. And um, we had fairly large number of clients, I would say, uh, by 2018. Uh, so we, we didn't come because she saw our PMS never started as, a, you know, I was working for some fund or something. I came here. We started from the ground. We won trust of our customers. We won money for them. And only then, we were probably one of the only ones in 2018 to pivot from being a research platform to be a PMS. And then PMS, it was, of course, again, zero to one. We started at zero. Uh, in 2018, we had zero AVM. And from there, again, we uh, did well for our customers. Uh, of course, this year has been a little tough, but broadly, we were the best performing fund for three consecutive uh, years. Uh, uh, so we did very well uh, and we will continue to do very well. So uh, that and the strategy broadly has remained the same. So uh, it's not like today we are testing our strategy or this thing. We've been growth investors. We don't buy companies that grow at 5%, 7%. We don't believe that we will be able to create large wealth here. Our portfolio is divided in the proven monopolies, companies which grow at 20, 25%, but they can grow that much for a very long period of time. And then we also have some kind of hyperscalers. So uh, hyperscalers are uh, businesses uh, which which also uh, will grow at probably more than 25, probably at 30, 35 percent for uh, the next five, seven, eight years. They, they are one percent of the market and they are also market leaders. So the style, the way of investing, it's evolved a little bit here and there, but largely We've been growth investors. It's not like we've not tried other ways of investing. Uh, we've tried value, but it, it never worked so well for us. And we in markets, the most important thing is the knowing, knowing yourself, know thy, thy, yourself. And we know that what we are good at, we are good at riding large long term trends. What we are not good at is uh, uh, is uh, like being looking at stocks, staying there for three years and not. You know, we'll, we'll sometime we'll cut off. We know that, that if a stock doesn't do well for two years, three years, we'll cut it off. We are risk managers. We need to manage our risk and move ahead if we are uh, losing uh, in any. If we made a mistake, we cut it off and move ahead. Thank you, personally. By the way, I am also from Raipur. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm born in Raipur. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm from Bilai. 
uh, oh wow <laughs> great great knowing you personally uh, so yes. amit uh, uh, you know the other thing is now so uh, there are few investors who have joined here for the first time and while you talked about your style which is essentially a growth investing but if you can also talk to us about uh, your overall pms the, the year it has completed the returns it has generated and the philosophy that you follow and uh, then i'll come to the next question so broadly our pms is completed about 3 years and 8 9 months uh, our return cagors uh, it might be a little different but it's broadly around 22 23% uh, the benchmark was about 11 12% so we are doing around a 10% alpha cagor so it's plus minus 1% uh, uh, since inception our portfolio beta has been 0.85 against nifty 500 so it's not like we've taken higher risk than nifty 500 we've taken way lower risk than nifty 500 to generate these returns uh, against nifty 50 our portfolio beta since inception has been 0.78 so we've taken 22% lower risk than nifty 50 how do we do this we as i said we invest in the four sectors consumer pharma technology financials what we are looking out for uh so it, this is a 2025 stock portfolio it's a multi cap kind of approach we are looking at market leaders which can basically go from 100 so our understanding is once you cross a 100 crore profit pool you have it becomes a company which which has so there is a red ocean where there's a lot of competition and then there is a blue ocean where you are the market leader and you dominate the entire game once we believe the company has become a joined a blue ocean kind of uh, like it's become a part of blue ocean and we can see sustainable growth coming here with market share increasing year over year uh, that's where we love to be in and but we don't like to be in companies which are a very high per, uh, like 70 80% of the entire market 90% of the entire market uh, because then it is very difficult for them to grow faster than the uh, the industry size unless they keep pivoting from one opportunity to another like something like an astral uh, it it started as a cpvc player it pivoted from cpvc to adhesif and for last i don't know five four five decades no one has been able to challenge pretty light but uh, astral came and people and when we met astral management 4 years 5 years back and we also thought this resinova is a bad investment this guy is a bad capital allocator pitlight ko kaun jata hai <laughs> competition dene ke liye uh, but he nailed it i, I don't know any so pitlight revenues are around 10000 crores 5000 is the adhesive business uh, probably the second largest adhesive player in the country is uh, astral at 1000 crore revenues so it's unbelievable what astral has done and now he's pivoting to other things so his old business grows at 15 15% but he keeps pivoting from one business model to uh, another so same is the case with page industries page industry was uh, just a men's underwear company uh, at start pivoted from uh, men's to athleisure leisure to women to now kids so uh, good Uh, Genomal was there on the call. This is about three quarters back before he just resigned, and he's the owner of Page Industry. For the ones who don't know him, so uh, he was there in the call. Uh, the whole game of getting into kids is basically once you get habitual to your undergarments, you typically don't change your brand. So everyone, so if a kid gets habitual to a brand for next fifty, sixty, seventy years, he will keep buying three, four undergarments from you every year. and so the size of a uh, profit pool uh, keeps uh, basically increasing for uh, these kind of companies so there are companies who ha- who basically don't move out of their own profit pool and then uh, because their profit pool opportunity is very large and then there are companies who pivot from one place to another to another right like someone like a dmart will not be uh, pivoting for a very long period of time right someone like a bajaj finance will not need to pivot on an hdfc will not pivot into multiple uh, opportunities because he's already there now because hdfc limited and bank will now become one he's already there in insurance amc uh, and and the lending side so there is nothing more that uh, hdfc can do no there can't be any new pivots he will keep growing uh, and gaining market share from other weaker players 
so 22-23% CAGR is a very good number. Uh, this is something uh, uh, almost 10% uh, alpha against the beta of 0.85%. That is also a remarkable achievement. So those who don't know much about beta level, so you know, in mutual fund, one beta is considered to be a not so risky. It's a good one. And if it is BMS and if it is below one, which is 0.85%, it is even more better. So this clearly indicates that how risk is being managed at the organization level. So uh, great, uh, Amit. Uh, so uh, the other question is now, uh, so how do you uh, uh, select stocks? What's your uh, thought process behind it? And uh, second is, suppose anybody wants to start, do you deploy money at one go or do you stagger it or what's your style? So how, how do we identify a business? So we divide businesses, Vikas Ji, in three parts. I'll give you an example of a farmer and try to explain you this, this thing. And these are the only, and this is probably the most important part. There are only three kinds of business models. If I'm a farmer, I have 100 rupees. Okay. I go out there and buy a dal, uh, dal uh, plant, a dal uh, land. I'm a very smart farmer. I know how to do farming well than other players. I buy great fertilizer. Assuming my ROIC is 33%. That means in year one, I make 33%, 33 rupees. Year two, I make 33. Year three, I make 33. At end of year three, I go, because I got my 100 again, I go out there and buy one more land. Then in year four, I generate 33 from land one, 33 from land two. 66 are here. Year four and a half, I get my hundred back. I buy one more land. In year five and a half, I have 33, 33, 33. Basically, the company or the farmer here is generating cash flows and reinvesting those cash flows at very high ROIC. If you get these kind of business and you have, and assuming Dal has an unlimited opportunity, right? Dal has a very large opportunity. Then you can bet big on these kind of business models. The second kind of business models are the ones who generate, who reinvest cash flows, but they reinvest cash flows at 12% ROIC. Now, what would that mean? I'll give you an example of a farmer again. A farmer went and he opened a dal uh, land. He started a dal cultivating uh, path. In year one, he makes 12 rupees. Year two, he makes 12 rupees. Year three, he makes 12 rupees. At end of year eight, he gets 96 back. Then he starts one more. He basically reinvests into one more uh, factory. Now, these business models, they appear cheap. Okay. It's P ratio 25 rega or 20 rega. But actually, they are very expensive. Right. Because if you cannot reinvest cash flow, a very high ROC, then it's not a good thing. You will not be able to grow. Then there is a third kind of business models. Uh, these these business models are asset light in nature. These are businesses like TCS, Infosys, HUL, Nestle. Now, they don't need capital to grow. Right? They don't need capital to grow at all. A TCS needs no capital to grow. Computer lagaya. <laughs> Danda chalu. Right? Uh, now, they are like the Galla model, I say. Okay? 100 rupees is where they invested 100 rupees in the land. Now, these businesses typically grow at inflation rates that and they are very smart businesses. So what happens is 100 rupees, take example of a farmer, again, 100 is invested in a land, 33 they get in year one. All the 33 is given back to you as dividend. Next year, since there is inflation and they grow at 10-12%, like HUL, Nestle, etc. Next year, they'll make 36-37 rupees. That also they'll give you back as dividend. The year after, they'll grow at, they'll become 40 rupees. And they'll give you back as dividend. So these kind of business models can create a lot of wealth if they can do continuous buybacks. Like, like if, if TCS and Infosys at low P keep doing buybacks, it becomes very profitable, right? Because you get 10-15% uh, earnings growth plus 3% dividend yield. So your CAGRs actually become very high, right? Uh, if, if Infosys grows at, let's say, 15% in dollar terms and rupee depreciates 4 or 5% every year, okay? 4% uh, every year. That means you're getting 19% stock price, basically profit CAGR, plus 2-3% dividend, 
dividend. So your CAGRs become 22%. And that is fantastic returns. You basically beat the market. See, the broad logic is that India's profit pool, India Nifty 500 profit pool Vikas Ji, in year 2021 was 6.5 lakh crores. By year 2031, this number will go to 17 lakh crores. From 6.5 lakh crores, India's profit pool will go to 17.5 lakh crores. That is a 10-11% growth in the next. That is very basic 10-11% compounding growth. Now, the, who will be the incremental ones to get the 11 lakh crores of profit pool that will get created in Nifty 50? If you get companies which are nifty growth is 11%. And if you get good companies which are growing at 15, 20%, you don't have to do much. And in small caps, we get aggressive only if the growth rate is 25, 30% plus. There is no uh, reason why anyone should buy a small cap for a 20% growth. Because you get 20% growth in proven large cap names in India. You don't have to go down. You're just taking more risk by going down. To your second question, Vikashi. So these are the three kinds of businesses. We invest in the reinvestment modes. The ones who can reinvest capital at very high ROIC for a very long period of time. And then we second, we invest in asset light compounders. Basically, the companies which keep giving us cash flows again and again. Now, uh, to your question uh, so we, uh, about how can someone get started on the PMS. Uh, getting started is uh, very easy. Connect to Vikashi. <laughs> uh, you'll need, uh, so you can, there are two ways you can get started. Uh, of course, everyone knows 50 lakh is the minimum uh, investment. One is the STP approach where where, where the money gets, uh, where, where you start with 50 lakhs and the money gets uh, divided in five tranches and over the next six months, you're fully invested in the market. This is just to avoid short-term volatility. Uh, so every month, 10, 10, 10 lakh uh, goes from the liquid fund to the uh, core PMS fund. And the second way is directly invest the lump sum amount. So uh, that those are the two ways. Uh, to your other question, uh, that how do we invest? Uh, do we invest like a model portfolio approach or do we invest one time the entire money? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, the, uh, the entire money, typically uh, the proven monopoly, 60, 70% is invested uh on day one and then 30 percent we invest over time but typically in two months 100 percent of the capital is uh, invested of the customers two three months so we yeah, don't going back to the question one which is so what would be essentially uh, i mean it's been now more than three years that you're running the portal how has been the allocation of the large cap vis-a-vis -vis mid caps and small caps in your overall portfolio 60 percent has been large cap broadly 35, 30, 35% has been mid cap. So between 50 to 60% I'll say has been large cap. But large cap with growth, not 10% growing large caps. That we don't have. That uh, that that we don't have. Uh, we largely have large caps. See, think about it, Vikashi. Who are the large caps which created value? Okay, last five years I'll give you an example. Probably DMART created value. Probably Bajaj Finance created value. Probably some IT stock like Infosys created value. You didn't make money in the companies which were growing at 10%, right? You made most of your money in companies which were either growing for 15% free cash flow and above. Your value will be created only with growth rate. ROC will only protect your downside risk. Uh, so to coming to your question, uh, though, how much is large cap? 60% is large cap. Broadly, 50 to 60% large cap. 30-40% uh, is mid cap. And 10% is small cap. But... There are times you might get aggressive. So, but we, whatever happens to us, whatever we are thinking or doing, we will come on a con call. So we have a quarterly con conference with our customers uh, once every uh, quarter. And we exactly tell them what is our strategy and what we're going to do and what we are thinking right now, what stocks we bought in this quarter, what sort of stocks we sold, why did we do that? So virtually every update that we are doing or any changes that we're going to make, we'll speak on that. Uh, con call which is attended by majority of our customers so and we also work hard on that con call to make sure that our customers know what is happening with their money in the portfolio I must appreciate this uh, now that we are discussing about this Amit that the kind of communication that you or your you know your people at an organization level they all uh, follow 
is I mean absolutely fantastic. I mean, uh, we've also got few investors who have invested to us, and all of them are very happy the way things are taking place. Uh, you know, in terms of regular communication. So I would say that keep up the good job, and it's very important to bring this sort of transparency on the table for our investors. Thank you, Vikashi. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So my uh, 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 quick round of two or three questions, and then we'll open the forum for Q and A. Uh, so I would request all the participants if you have any questions, please type in your questions in uh, chat box. Uh, we'll take them one by one. Uh, we are now. Uh, we've got another fifteen minutes, uh, so we'll start taking the questions. So, uh, okay, I can see some of them are typing the question. In the meantime, so uh, Amit, uh, my question is. Uh, when i look at your portfolio when you say it's, uh, it's multi cap i know that you know as an organization you feel that it's good to invest in large cap because they you don't have to go down uh, to the to the last end of the curve to pick up the companies but we can see that there are not to forget that and this is a question that i keep getting from investors not to forget that uh, dmart or um, dmart is not a right example even bajaj finance was one point of time a small cap and has grown over a period of time so why do you have only 5% exposure to small cap so in october 2021 uh, vikashi we had taken a call to cut our uh, small caps from the portfolio okay and uh, that is where so we we did have except saregama we had cut all our small caps in october 2021 that's where we started thinking that inflation uh, is going through the roof and we had told our customers also that you know what uh, for next 9 to 15 months, we're going to be a little more defensive on the market and we want to lower our portfolio beta. Not that that worked very well, but we lowered our portfolio beta. Now, last con call, we've told our customers that we will increase our emerging monopoly basket. Uh, I call these emerging companies, right? Uh, but because since you gave an example of Bajaj Finance, Bajaj Finance from 2011 to 2017, every year, the CAGR was closer to 44% AUM growth, right? Uh, so it was not like Bajaj Finance was growing at 15, 20%, right? If we get a small cap where we get a 40, 45% AUM growth, you can be assured <laughs> that we will be riding that trend. So, uh, uh, so if we get something, we are in. Uh, but uh, like we were, we we made very we made a seven eight x in India market. Uh, that is something that we exited. Uh, we, may, we made decent uh, money in uh, uh, Dixon. Uh, Dixon we bought at 6,000 crores. Uh, we've exited at 22,000 crores market cap, right? So that there we made and we bought it on the mobile PLI announcement. That was a hyperscaler. But yet it was a market leader. So it's not like we are leaving out the market leader part. Uh, we still own APL Apollo, which already been 8x. And all this has happened just like uh, DMART we got in first day. Uh, it's been so it's all the patterns are same right you need market leadership with growth the same was the pattern in page industry page industry was a market leader and it used to grow at 40 40 percent right and that's how page industry revenues grew from in 2009 if i'm not wrong was 260 crores by 2016 page industry revenues was 27 or 20 26 or 2700 crores basically it was hyper scaling at 30 30 40 percent uh, Jinomal ji would sell some shares but come on the con call and give a uh, growth targets of 30-35%. Uh, same with your Astral. Astral was a monopoly in CPVC in India. right? A C pipe market was basically steel market. Then it pivoted to PVC and then in CPVC, the only person who had the technology uh, was uh, Astral because Astral was with Lubrizol. Right? And that same point we were riding Avanti Feeds also. Avanti Feeds was the market leader uh, in, in prawns feed. It's basically made of soya bean. It's, it is 47% market share of India's prawns. So we made money in buying emerging monopolies. We didn't make our money only in proven monopolies. That's why. So today in October, we had taken a call to go a little defensive on the market. Now I'm telling you that we are getting more and more like you'll see some of the uh, uh, the third asset like compounders in my portfolio which I spoke about they have done their work and now we should start getting aggressive and you'll see that uh, uh, we will start uh, getting uh, aggressive 
and we'll buy mid caps with but with they, these mid caps will hyper scale they, we will not buy for 10 20% growth yeah, yeah asking you so yeah so so now now that time has come see when there is so much uncertainty vikas ji when you have for last 17 uh, sorry not 17 for last 12 years we've seen fed printing money and the only thing and we used to call it the fed put whenever the market would come down 20% fed would come and print money after 20 years we are seeing we, we we saw that coming not that we made money out of it but we saw a scenario where the fed will not be able to print money because the inflation is high the printing goes out of uh, whack and uh, the signs were there but typically this is the first time because i'm seeing something like this where defensive have fallen more than the small caps the small caps correction this time has been uh, typically for last 8 9 bear markets because the retail flows uh the dii flows has been very strong and the fi flows have been very distinct so uh, but we will move towards uh, emerging monopolies very aggressively and this earning season is where we get aggressive typically all my changes happen in the earning season that because we get volumes also and we can basically get in get out fast and we will uh, this one month i'm expecting decent changes on the portfolio sure okay so now uh, i can see uh, questions coming up so we we'll start taking them one by one so first question comes from uh, mr vasu how do we prepare if in case of any low probability black swan event so, so basically is trying to understand yeah how do you prepare yourself okay. what happens in a black swan uh, your dollar goes higher or uh, like if you have consumer companies okay inflation goes hyper inflation but consumer companies don't get impacted by it because they have that ability to pass on prices right uh if if some th- something goes wrong in financials you don't buy the lowest quality financials you buy the highest quality financials always financials don't even try to do value investing you will die most people buy so you need to see that in pharma what kind of black swan can happen and if the black swan we think uh impacts the terminal value we sell out <laughs> and move ahead <laughs> so uh, there is nothing wrong see there are only three kinds of things that can happen in uh, four kinds of things that can happen in the stock market big profit small profit big loss small loss if you can avoid big loss you're left with three things big profit small profit small loss and that is where we if we make mistakes we cut move ahead there is no see markets are not a place where you say that maine jo bola tha uh if you think you made a mistake cut it move ahead and uh, and buy something else right because there are it's a 6000 stocks are there so why get so attached to what i said will happen if it doesn't happen because the world is changing and we need to uh basically be in the right approach so uh my at any given point of time for me yesterday's closing price is the price at which i buy a stock right uh, and you start thinking that way that would i be a buyer or would i be a seller or uh, now that like i'm not so we our churn is not high our churn is probably 30 40% a year which is lesser than mutual funds but but we think in that approach we think that we have to manage our risk and move ahead if we make mistakes okay the second question is from mr kumar top 3 companies with largest percentage value for next quarter growth next quarter growth see it depends if there are see a lot of companies this this year uh, like last april may june was a covid lockdown if you remember uh, uh, this time the base of most companies are very small okay last quarter was a write off same time last year was a wave 2 of covid uh, so there will be multiple companies that will show like dmart showed 200% growth but that growth is not real right uh, titan showed 300% growth but that growth the uh, is not uh, real from revenues from 3400 crores of titan uh, will come to 10500 crores this is the update which they have already announced so uh, you need to see with sector like an it company growing at 25% over a high base last quarter is better than a company growing at probably 100% from a very low base uh, this year so this quarter is you have to see which 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 company because everyone has discounted fy23 now it is that ye jo humne fy23 socha hai eps क्या उससे बेटर कर रहा है कि बस्ट कर रहा है एवरी वन एज डिस्काउंटेड एवरी थिंग नाउ मार्केट आर वेरी एफिशियंट सो हाइएस्ट ग्रोथ कंपनी फॉर नेक्स्ट वन क्वार्टर वेरी स्मॉल होराइजन बट आई वुड से राइट नाउ 
the amount of problems which are there around the globe, it is better to have a very large position towards India facing businesses, be it consumer companies in India, be it financials in India. The world has too many problems right now. So you have to be an India focused business. Jo India se dhanda kar hai. Kyunki India mein to koi problem hai nahi. India is booming. So be more on the India side. This is not the time to increase uh, too much towards exports and all that. They, they will take their own time. They're going through a very uh, tough time, I would say. Europe is going through a tough time. US is uh, basically the Fed wants a recession to come. Uh, 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 because so it will take time. So these things take two, one, one, two, two years. But India is booming. So let's focus on companies in India, which will do well for next uh, eight, ten quarters. Uske baad dekhenge, wapas Next question is from Mr. Bhandari. Looking at the bank's result from previous and the current quarter, uh, will they lead next rally in the markets? What's your sense? If FIs will come back, they have taken, if they've taken 5 lakh crores, I can tell you 3.5 lakh crores is from banks. 3 lakh crores. <laughs> so because 75% of their money is into, 4 lakh crores is what they've taken out. 3 lakh crores would be bank because 75% of their money is in banks. Uh, they will come back and buy financials from you. So this dip, uh, you can uh, easily uh, uh, buy uh, 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 buy financials. So you, I, I, I believe there's no credit risk coming. So buy decent financials. Don't You don't have to go to the lowest uh, quality of financial. Buy good financials and just stay put. You'll make, in my humble opinion, you should make 100% in the next three years. Next question is from Mr. Thole. How do you study sector rotation in the stock markets? Basically, how do you decide? See, wherever you find growth, that is where money will be made. So if uh, if if basically last three, four years, chemicals was doing very well. So the growth rate of chemicals was 30-40%, right? All chemical companies were doing capexes. Like SRF capex right now is 4,700 crores that they have planned capex. RT capex for next two years is 3,500 crores. And these are capexes which are very large for the size at which they are. So these guys are seeing visibility of growth rates. Uh, RT industry has given targets to 2027. Uh, Deepak Nitrite created India's, it became make, made in, make in India. Phenolics, they created a monopoly. So you need to see what is happening. Uh, but the next sector will be different from the last bull market cycle. Uh, uh, you, you need to, so we, do we study sector rotation? Of course, we study sector rotation. We track every strategy which is there under the sun. We don't leave any strategy. We have our own strategy, but we are always scared that if this strat is this strategy better than what we are having, because you always question yourself that is something that can we get better, right? The whole idea is next new better. So we do study sector rotation in the market and wherever you see growth of 20, 25-30% for next 12 to 18 quarters. That's where the trend will get made. The entire sector will start making a new height together. So sector trends are made when the entire sector, when the IT trend came from 2020 to 2021 October, uh, the entire sector, Infosys was making new high, Mindtree was making new high, Coforge was making new high, KPIT was making new high, uh, Tata Alexi was making more. Virtually everything in the entire sector keeps making a new high. Same with chemicals, right? Uh, when chemical was trending, Aarti, Deepak, uh, and then you also will, you'll get uh, that new, new IPOs will come at 100p in that sector, right? Clean Sands came at 100p, 500 crore revenues, 20,000 crores market cap. Uh, so those kind of things will happen with when the sector is in trend for three, four years. So we track sector rotation. Sure, sure. So with that, we'd like to conclude the session and uh, thank you for uh, taking the time out, joining the session, answering all the questions so patiently and helping all our investors to take the right decision. So on their behalf, I would like to thank you. And I also thank all the participants who joined us today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vikashi, for having me on your show. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.